To many of us today, the DNR working to protect populations of animals or burning prairies to help them grow again is just another common sight. A wilderness area is just another part of our national park system. At the turn of the 20th century, none of these now common practices had yet been established. Aldo Leopold worked on these and other topics to lay the foundation of our modern environmental conservation movement. Although he is best known for his book, A Sand County Almanac, his life's work is not confined to the binding of one book. On January 11, 1887, Leopold was born in Burlington, Iowa, an up-and-coming frontier town on the Mississippi River. His interest in the outdoors was apparent from an early age. He was first introduced to conservation by his father, who set personal bag limits on threatened species at a time when commercial hunter was a job title. Leopold finished his high school education at Lawrenceville School in Princeton, New Jersey. He then went to Yale University with the intent of becoming a forester. Yale's graduate program in forestry was founded in 1900 by Gifford Pinchot, the first chief of the U.S. Forest Service. Leopold completed his degree and worked for the United States Forest Service in District 3 in the Southwest. Current Forest Service policy was to use grazing as a means of fire control and to immediately put out any fires. In 1923, Leopold published his Watershed Handbook, a compilation of his field experience in the Southwest. First, he identified overgrazing as the main cause of erosion in watersheds. Second, he advocated for grazing permits to be allotted by the condition of the watershed, not the amount of available land. Finally, he stated that fire was good for the land, encouraging healthy growth and maintaining the natural course of the watershed. Leopold first visited the headwaters of the Gila River while reviewing the Daytail National Forest in New Mexico. This land would soon become the focus of Leopold's quest for the preservation of things wild. The early 1900s showed a marked change in the way people spent their lives. As leisure time increased and transportation improved, Many more Americans found time to travel to new and interesting locations. The National Forest Service was created with the intent of preservation, but money drives policy and people paid more for recreational developments than remote wilderness. In a 1919 memorandum, Leopold first stated, There are portions of natural scenic beauty in order to return the greatest total value to the people, ought to be protected from marring features of man-made constructions. In his 1921 article, The Wilderness and Its Place in Forest Recreation Policy, Leopold gave an initial definition of wilderness. By wilderness, I mean a continuous stretch of country preserved in its natural state and kept devoid of roads, artificial trails, cottages, or other works of man. At the end of the article, Leopold proposed setting aside the headwaters of the Gila River. On October 2, 1922, Leopold formally submitted his report on proposed wilderness area. The Gila Wilderness Area was formally established on June 3, 1924, becoming the first such area in the National Forest System. In 1935, Leopold became a founding member of the Wilderness Society. Howard Zanzer of the Wilderness Society wrote the Federal Wilderness Act of 1964. This act created the National Wilderness Preservation System, which today encompasses almost 110 million acres. In 1928, there was no national consensus on how to go about wildlife management. Popular views were split between major conservation groups who supported a national refuge system and protectionists like William T. Hornday who favored reduced bag limits and shortened hunting seasons. Very few facts were known about actual conditions, 
Although Leopold was hired to fill this gap by taking a national survey of game populations, he reported his findings to the 17th American Game Conference in his report on the game survey of the North Central States. This report became the basis of the American Game Policy, also written by Leopold. This policy declared that it was time for wildlife management to be recognized as a distinct profession with trained professionals and a stable funding source. It also established how private landowners, like farmers, could manage public game resources. The Isaac Walton League of America later awarded Leopold its gold medal for his work on this policy. The Great Depression affected many Americans, including Leopold, who found himself out of a job. Using the knowledge he gained while working on the National Game Survey, he wrote his most revolutionary book, Game Management. At the time, game managers were seen as a group of overzealous hunters. Game management was revolutionary by not only including the theory of how organisms interact, but by suggesting techniques with which to influence populations. This book established Leopold as a national figure in wildlife management. In 1933, the University of Wisconsin-Madison created the Department of Game Management, the first of its kind in the nation, with Leopold as its chair and only professor. His first courses were techniques for farmers to increase the abundance of wildlife on their lands. To help his first graduate student, Albert Hochbaum, Leopold secured a grant from the American Wildlife Institute to establish the Delta Waterfowl Research Station. Here, Hochbaum went on to conduct groundbreaking research in waterfowl management, earning him the title the father of modern waterfowl science. Leopold also advocated against clean farming. Game is most abundant on the edges between two types of cover. Woodlots and fence rows increase cover, thus increasing game. He also helped farmers reduce poachers on their lands by establishing game cooperatives where hunters would do conservation work in exchange for hunting rights. His most famous one is the Riley Game Cooperative in Riley, Wisconsin. In 1934, Aldo Leopold initiated the process of land and plant restoration by helping establish the University of Wisconsin Arboretum and Wildlife Refuge. In 1935, he bought a rundown farm in Baraboo, Wisconsin, known affectionately as the Shack. It was at these two locations that Leopold became one of the first practitioners of land restoration. He took two pieces of exhausted land and transformed them back into what they were before settlement. Leopold's restoration at the shack was part of his inspiration for writing a Sand County Almanac in its most famous essay, The Land Ethic. This essay is important because it was the first to view the land as morally considerable rather than just a commodity, founding the field of environmental ethics. A Sand County Almanac is important because it was the first conservation book aimed at the common man, not the scientist. Leopold's views on environmental education stated in this and other works went on to inspire future generations, including Senator Gaylord Nelson, the founder of Earth Day. In 1942, Aldo Leopold was named as the chairman of the Citizens Deer Committee. Leopold had already worked in deer management in Wisconsin, including making it the first state to legalize an archery-only deer hunting season. As the head of the committee, Leopold worked to establish the first antlerless season. He also called for the protection of predators, like wolves, to help control deer populations. Although Leopold's life's work encompasses most of conservation, from plants to animals to soil, his legacy of bringing conservation to everyone is still growing today. There is, however, no better way to sum up his work than he already has. There are some who can live without wild things, and some who cannot. These are the delights and dilemmas of one who cannot.